Tiana's Bayou is the biggest train wreck in the history of Disney. Hello everybody, welcome. Now before you jump on me and get all over my case, this has nothing to do with the actual ride experience itself or my thoughts on the ride attraction. It has everything to do with the fact that I haven't even been able to ride it yet. Disney, I don't know what you're doing. I have no idea, but I am just completely, ugh. I'm so frustrated with this Tiana's Bayou Adventure opening. I have been trying to ride this ride for weeks, a month. Like all of the previews, all of the sneak peeks, everything that I've been able to go to and invited to. I've even gone to opening day, can't ride the ride. It's always busted. Get in line, ready to roll, goes down, shuts down, down for the day, non-stop. Like, I can't even ride this. I don't, Disney, what are you doing? I just don't even understand right now. It's one thing to say, hey, it's in technical rehearsals. I get it, like previews and stuff. I wasn't too upset. I was like, hey, you know what, it's previews. It's technical rehearsals. There's bound to be some kinks. Maybe some of the animatronics aren't gonna work. But no, shut down. And here we are at the grand opening. The, the attraction's f formally open to the public. And it's down for hours and hours and hours. So you can't even use the excuse anymore that it's like, hey, it's in technical rehearsals. Or, hey, you should expect that because it's in previews. There's bound to be bugs. No, it's open. It's grand opening. It's had it. And it doesn't work. I don't understand. This makes no sense to me. Here's the thing. I love Princess Tiana. I love Princess and the Frog. That is my jam. It is one of the best princess movies to come out in a long time, along with Encanto, or Encanto, however you want to pronounce it, and Moana. I am a fan of those. I love them. And I am so excited for Tiana. Uh, I, I want Tiana's experience to be amazing. Like, I'm ready for Tiana's ride. She needs more focus. I want her there. And I just think she deserves so much. Actually, one of my favorite resorts to stay at is Port Orleans, Port Orleans Riverside specifically. And I love the fact that their royal rooms have a Princess Tiana right there, big front and center. I love it. So I am, a lot of this frustration is in respect to that. Like, I really want Tiana's to be successful. We need more Tiana. And uh, so far, I just feel like Disney's kind of dropping the ball here. I wanted to go back and I was trying to understand, is this normal? Like, does this happen a lot? I was trying to think back of all the attractions and how long was, maybe they maybe they rushed the opening. Maybe they should have held it back a little bit. If I was trying to think back at some of the other attractions that have opened or been rethemed recently and the amount of time it took to build things. So if we look at a couple of things that have recently happened at Universal, and Islands of Adventure, I was thinking about the recent Minions Blast replacement for Shrek 4D. Shrek 4D closed on January 10th of 2022. And then Minions Blast opened in August of 2023. So it's about a year and a half-ish. We're just gonna use that year and a half-ish as we go forward here, because that seems to be a pretty standard timeline for these types of re-themes or attractions. I'm thinking Minions Blast, which was a completely, a complete redo. Like, we, they went from a theater with seats to a moving sort of sidewalk, like new, of like basically not, not first of its kind because those moving sidewalks have existed before, but really kind of an innovative new way of doing an attraction that is not really popularized. And so they really had to redo that whole thing with all the screens and the guns. I mean, this wasn't just like a re-theme of Shrek 4D. I mean, this was a completely new attraction. Uh, now, am I saying Minions Blast is awesome? No, not really. I mean, I don't think it's awesome for me. I think it's cool, but it's kind of like, I don't know. I just don't, I never know what I'm doing on that ride, to be honest. I never know if I'm hitting targets or what, but 
I don't know. It's it's not my favorite attraction, but it's a complete redo of something that was there before. And Minions Cafe was opened, completely gutted. You know the monsters, uh, the monsters universe, the monsters cafe that was there redid something from scratch. And Minions Cafe actually rocks. Like it's awesome. I love the retheming of it. The food there is so cool. And I'm just kind of trying to think back, like a year and a half. That's about how much time. And then I was thinking of, and then I was thinking of the whole DreamWorks Land retheme. Uh, so when it moved from sort of like the kid zone area with Curious George and American Tail and all that stuff, when they sort of redid that entire area, the kid zone closed down January 15th of 2023, and the new DreamWorks Land opened June 14th of 2024. So again, about a year and a half ish seems to be the sweet spot for these kind of rethemes. Now, don't get me wrong, the DreamWorks area again. Nothing groundbreaking in there. They rethemed one of the coasters. They added a cool like interactive show, kind of like the Turtle Talk with Crush experience over in Epcot and the Living Seas. Uh, they updated their show with all the, you know, all the trolls and everything. But overall, just kind of a general retheme of the land. Year and a half, open without a hitch, no problems on the coasters, no issues at all. They added some new experiential things. It's kind of a cool space, year and a half. Now I want to go over to Disney and think about the Maelstrom replacement, Frozen Ever After. And I was thinking back, Maelstrom closed October 5th of 2014. And then Frozen Ever After opened June 21st of 2016. So again, that's about a year and a half for the re-theme. And again, nothing groundbreaking with Frozen Ever After. Same track, same general log flume ride. They basically just changed out all the decorations, added some cool animatronics with some like facial projection stuff. Um, kind of similar really to Tiana's Bayou re-theme of Splash Mountain. Not as involved. Don't get me wrong, Splash Mountain is a big ride. I mean, that was a, that, that thing is huge. It's like, I don't even know, it's like 10 minute long ride. So I get it, it's a lot bigger. But it's still general retheming. Uh, they didn't change, Splash Mountain, Tiana's Bayou, they didn't change the actual ride itself, the physical structure of the ride. It's just a retheme. I think about things like Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind, which they just built. I mean, they took longer than a year and a half. I think it was a couple of years to build Guardians of the Galaxy, but I mean, that's a super advanced roller coaster. It's got spinning and all these projections and these cool pre-shows, and it's just a complete redo. Had to build an entire building, and they were able to open that on time and without any hitches. I was there opening day. I was there for the previews. The, the, the thing barely shut down and never really shut down. I mean, it was... It was rocking and rolling from the very beginning, had no issues at all. So I'm just kind of confused. Think about Islands of Adventure. Does anybody remember when Islands of Adventure was created over at Universal? So think about Universal Studios, when they added Islands of Adventure, you know how long it took them to build all of Islands Adventure of Adventure? The whole thing, the whole thing, two years, 1997 to 1999. That's when that took place, two years for to build the entire thing. 1979 to 1982. That's how long it took them to build Epcot. All of Epcot, three years, the whole thing. The giant geodesic sphere with Spaceship Earth and all the stuff in Epcot, three years. Magic Kingdom, four years. 1967 to 1971, four years to build Magic Kingdom. And that's with having to build it on this. They built all, they built Magic Kingdom on the second story because they have all the underground tunnel systems, because they, they wanted to have underground tunnel systems, but in Florida, there's no such thing because you're basically at sea level, so you can't dig into the ground. So they had to heap all this dirt up and they had to create underground tunnels and build all of Magic Kingdom on top of it. Four years. So what's going on with Tiana's Bayou again? Why is it busted? Why is it down most of the day during its grand openings? It's a retheme. I don't get it. Again, I'm not talking anything about the attraction itself. For all I know, it's gonna be the greatest thing ever. But I don't know, because they can't ride it. Because it's not working, ever. So it got me thinking, what's the rush? Like, why rush it? Why did they open it if it wasn't ready? This is not new information. Like, it was busted during previews, during annual pass previews, during the media previews. Oh yeah, hmm. Remember the disaster that was Tron and how long it took them to finish Tron? It became the running joke of the industry that like Tron, 
is never going to be finished. Why is it taking so long to build Tron? Tron is basically, it's literally a copy of a ride that already exists. And all they did was have to take the copy. No, no new innovation, no new things that needed to be created, just a complete copy of something that already existed it took them forever. Then we had the disaster of the World Celebration at Epcot. The Moana and World Celebration. No, don't get me wrong. I enjoy the Moana Garden. It's fine. I love it. It's cute. I love Moana. But five years for a garden? Don't get me wrong. COVID was in there, but five years for a garden. And then we just recently had the disaster of the Communicor. I mean, there's some cool things. There's some cool things. I like the show. Um, I like the World Celebration. I like the Creation Shop. I like the Coca-Cola store. I like those things. Good ads. If you haven't seen my video where I do a breakdown of like Epcot then versus now and whether that's actually progress or not, check it out because it's actually a really cool video because it breaks it down in great detail. But the Communicor itself, the Communicor Hall, like I get that it's a flex space. I get that they're going to use it for special events and weddings and all that stuff. But come on, it's, it's kind of, it's low key kind of a disaster if I'm being totally transparent. It's a hospital cafeteria. I'm starting to think maybe people are starting to lose a little bit of faith in Disney. Uh, maybe, maybe just a little bit. Even die hard Disney fans like myself are just starting to see some cracks, which are a little concerning because I love Disney. Disney, I want you on track. I just don't know what's going on lately. I think about all the great announcements, D23 Expo, every year they do this big expo and they talk about all the stuff that's coming, all the stuff they're thinking about doing. And it's just getting to the point where I think a lot of people are starting to look at that D23 Expo and go, yeah, it looks cool, it looks nice, but none of us believe you're actually gonna do any of it because they don't do it. They talk about it, they talk about all the cool things that they might be doing, and then they don't do it. And the things that they actually do aren't good or at least aren't what the concept art says it was going to be uh you know they show all these great flashy things and then all of a sudden they budget cut stuff and they kill it and then all of a sudden it ends up being a hospital cafeteria also i just read something um that said disney world's attendance this summer has been down that it's actually predicted to be down about 25 percent for the summer I'm just feeling like maybe Disney was feeling like they needed a win, and I'm not sure that this was the win that they needed or that they were hoping for. I'm also starting to think that maybe Disney's a little bit scared of Epic Universe over at Universal. Um, I mean, I am, I mean, I think everybody probably watching this video is stoked about Epic Universe. If you're not, it's because you don't, you haven't been watching enough videos, because trust me, it's fire, it looks fire. And uh, unlike, like I said, unlike Disney's D23, the concept art that they've been showing for Epic Universe looks on point from everything that we're seeing construction-wise, everything from the models, everything we're seeing. It looks like a mirror copy, pretty much, of what's been in the concept art. So I'm getting more faith in Universal delivering on all these experiences because they just keep delivering one after the next after the next they just keep getting win after win after win the sensational uh drone firework water show was it was on fire i mean it was so good that they just keep racking up win after win after win whereas i feel like disney just keeps racking up l after l after l like they're just they're just dropping l's like i, I don't know what's going on you know how you throw your jacket on a chair at the end of the day mm. well like that only instead of a chair it's a pile of garbage <laughs> And instead of a jacket, it's a pile of garbage. <laughs> and instead of the end of the day, it's the end of time, and garbage is all that has survived. And I'm really feeling like uh, Epic Universe and the fact that they've had so many delays and they've released things that have been kind of failures uh, in the eyes of the public, that they have been a little bit disappointing for people and they've been taking so long to do them. I feel like they rushed Tiana's Bayou. I feel like it was not ready. It, sh it should not have been released. They should have they should have held it aside and said it was delayed. We'll release it when it's ready because I think what's happening is people are going and they're getting really frustrated because they can't ride it. And they have high expectations. I mean, there are people who have been flying to Orlando from other states, maybe even other countries, I don't know. But I know for a fact, other states flying in Orlando just to ride Tiana's Bayou. That's it, just to ride that 
and then go home. And they have not been able to ride it. So to me, I just feel like that's that that's a miss. I, I don't know. Like so again, I just ugh, I love you, Disney, but wow, I don't know what you were doing. Get on track. So I've been pretty frustrated about it, um, but hey, I am gonna go try and get on it again tomorrow, and I'm gonna stay as long as it takes. I'm gonna, I'm really, I'm gonna try and do really early. I'm gonna try to get that queue as soon as I possibly can and get over there ASAP and maybe, just maybe, I'll get to ride it. And then I can talk about whether it's amazing or whether it's a dud. I don't even know. I know people online have been saying, eh, it's been mixed. Some people are saying it's amazing. Some people are saying it's kind of a dud. I don't really listen to a lot of that. I've been actually actively trying not to spoil the ride for myself because I want to experience it for myself and decide for myself whether or not it's amazing. And so I'm gonna try tomorrow. So there may be another video coming right after this that talks about the actual ride experience um, and whether or not I was able to even get on it. So be on the lookout for that, hit the notification because I'd love to, you know, you, you, you watch this video, you might as well watch the next video because that's where we're actually gonna get into the ride itself. So I don't know, I feel like Epic Universe has definitely got Disney panicked. I think some of their some of the L's they've been taking lately has got them panicked. I think they opened Tiana's Bayou Adventure too early. It's not helping the situation. They're taking another L on that. But they could end up taking a big W with it. Um, if they can get it back on track, they can get it fixed, they can make it work, it might be amazing. So overall, let me know what you think. If you're on this in the same camp as me, are you a Disney fan and you're kind of just like, I don't know what's going on. They need to get it together, or are you like, hey, you know, I don't know what you're talking about. Disney's killing it, and uh, but to me, I just Universal's killing it. Disney's just keeps kind of stumbling. So, hopefully, Disney gets back on track because for me, great theme parks breed lots of competition with each other. I think if one does great and the other does great, it, it's a win for all of us because they push each other to be better and they push each other to continually advance technology. So I think Universal being great is great for Disney. I think Disney being great is great for Universal. So that's my hope. So anyhow, let me know what you think in the comments. Be sure to like, subscribe, share, hit the notification so you know when that video drops tomorrow. If we get on it, we'll see. And until I see you next time, the boy is the easy way. Bye-bye, everybody.